Chains, we are clean. You want to see the world through your eyes. Out of chains, we are free. We want to see the world through your eyes. Out of chains, we are free. We want to see the world through your eyes. And love like you. Good morning. Delay reaction. Liti natin. Magandang magandang umaga po sa ating lahat. Yay men, yan. Mo kung nagalmusal sila. Okay. Ano po yun? Naririnig natin yun. Ito mataas na naman daw ang langis. Sino ba nakakarilate dito? Sino yung mga napapakamot na naman sa ulo? Di ba? Lalo na yung mga diesel. Six daw, six pesos daw. Buti pa yung mga gasolina. Piso lang, nak. 
Pero so, siyempre ngayon, uh, tapos na yung September and ngayon naman, October na naman po tayo. At ano po yung napapalapit ngayong panahon? Yon, Pasko. Kaya nga si KR, gustong gusto nang magpunta ko sa, para makapag-shopping. Sama mo kami ha. At siyempre, iniisip natin kung ano-ano yung mga nais nating ibigay sa ating mga mahal sa buhay, sa ating mga friends, sa ating mga kakilala. Naisip din po ba natin kung ano yung mga nais nating ibigay o ilaan sa ating Panginoon? Hinihili ko po ang lahat na magsitayo at sama-sama nating papurihan, sama-sama nating awitan, haranahin natin ang ating Panginoon. Dahil kahit anong mangyari, siya po lamang at wala nang iba. Pagsintay iyong dinggit Kala 
sa pag-anon puso ko ay sa iyo magmamahal sa habang panahon natatangin kaya manan ko'y ikaw ay sambahin wakas na pagsintay iyong tingkin kalakit ng awitin. Yes, patuloy po nating sambahin ang ating Panginoon. Kahit po may mga suffering tayong nararanasan, hindi po laging up, laging po tayong may ups and down. Pero ano pipiliin natin? Purihin ang Panginoon sa kahit anong circumstances ng ating buhay. Tama po ba? Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. Blessed be your name in the land that is plentiful, where the streams of abundance flow. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name when I found in the desert place when I walk through the wilderness. Blessed be your name. Every blessing you pour out, I turn back to praise. When the darkness closes in, Lord, still I will say, Blessed be the name of the
Panginoon lamang ang makapagbigay at pwedeng kumuha ng lahat sa atin. Patuloy tayo magpuri. Pasalamatan natin siya. Bakit kahit tayo hindi karapat dapat, patuloy niya tayong pinipili. Patuloy niya tayong ginagamit. Salamat, Panginoon.
Mas tunay nga, Panginoon, na ikaw lang ang karapat dapat na sambahin at puruhin. Maraming salamat, Ama, sa pagpili mo sa amin. Panginoon, dalangin ko na ihanda mo kami. Ihanda mo kami sa isip, ang aming puso, ang aming tenga para sa iyong mensahe ngayong gabi, ay kayong umaga, Panginoon. At nawa, ang lahat ng aming maririnig ay aming magamit sa aming pang-araw-araw na pamumuhay. Maraming salamat, Panginoon. Dakila ka at karapat-dapat kang purihin. Sa ngala ni Jesus, Amen. Maari na si Upo. Amen! Good morning, Impact Church family! Ayan, buhay na buhay na sila. Tunay nga po na napakasarap umawit at magpuri sa ating Panginoon. Kamusta po ang bawat isa? Pwede ba akong maka thumbs up dyan? Halatang nasa ano pa rin eh, online class. Ayan, okay po tayo. And of course, no, we are indeed blessed to experience the presence of God in this place and of course the presence of each one. On-site and, of course, online. Magandang-magandang umaga po sa mga kasama natin online, lalong-lalo na po yung mga nasa Kogyo. Good morning po sa inyo and we hope na kayo din po ay nag-enjoy sa ating pag-aawitan. And of course, we would like to greet yung ating mga bisita, ating first-timers ngayong umaga. Yan. Unahin ko na po si Ate Bernar Bernandita, si Ate Bodet. Yan. Good morning. Ayun, si Ate Budet. Good morning. Kasama niya ang kanyang dalawang anak na si Jay at si, si, Jay at si Jovan. Yan. Kasama po natin si Ate Budet sa ano, malasakit. Yan. Welcome po. First timer mo pa lang ngayon. <laughs> Nagulat din ako kasi lagi po namin siya nakakasama. And of course, si, si uh, Sir Joel Franz. Siya po ay teacher. Sa Ramon Magsaysay at uh, how did you hear about Impact Church from school? Yan. So, uh, siya po ay galing ng Ramon Magsaysay. And meron pa po dito si Lisa May. Yan. Welcome, Lisa May. Ayan. We welcome po namin kayo and I, uh, we hope na makasama din po namin kayo next Sunday at sa mga susunod pa pong linggo. And for our announcement, gusto nating simulan sa pagbati ng mga magse-celebrate ng kanilang kaarawan. Kahapon po, yan po ay si Arwen Bondo. Happy birthday, Arwen! And sa October 10, ayan, si Gladys, bukas yan, Gladys Opsima and si Micaela Rodriguez. Si Ate Gladys ay taga Kogyo. Happy birthday, Ate Gladys! May kainan daw sila. <laughs> Ako na nag-decide eh, no? Hindi. Sa October 11 naman po ay si Melvin Francisco, si Audrey Landingin, at si Elaine Joy Manalo. Ayan. And October 13, yan, si Mami Badet. Andito kasama natin si Mami Badet at si Doc Rachel. Yan, sabay silang magse-celebrate ng birthday. And syempre, sa October 14, ang poging pamangkin, ni Pastor Raymond, si Kuya Jerome. Domingo, happy birthday sa inyong lahat. Yan. And of course, we would like to greet yung magse-celebrate ng kanilang wedding anniversary, si Kuya Ray at si Ate Wendy Kamota. Ayan. And yun, pum pumunta naman po tayo sa... Ah, uh, invasion, campus invasion report. So last Friday po ay nasimula na nilang pumunta sa One Sumulong High School. Yan. So nakapag uh, nakapamigay din po sila ng ng kit sa mga students and yan, nakikita niyo naman po sa picture. Nagkaroon sila ng time na kausapin yung mga estudyante uh, and to uh, um, tell about yung ating simbahan. And of course, yung tungkol sa ating student center. And uh, this week po ay last uh, last week na po nila dito sa ating campus invasion. So kung free po kayo, ay pwede pa po kayong humabol para ma-experience na din po 
yung uh, pag-invade or pag pagbisita sa ating mga campuses. And of course, no, dahil uh, ginawa po natin ito, meron po itong follow-up. So patuloy po nating ipag-pray yung ating mga pastors na na-assign po dito, si Pastor Gerard, Pastor Olim, at si Pastor Gerald sa kanilang gagawing follow-up. And of course, uh, sana po ay ma masimula na nila yung uh, homeroom classes sa mga campuses na ito. Kasi magandang opportunity po yan para mas lalo po silang, uh, mas lalong mapatiba yung relationship natin dito sa mga students. And of course, ang pinaka-main goal natin ay magkaroon din sila ng personal relationship kay Jesus Christ. Yan. And yun! Gusto nyo po bang lumago sa inyong personal experience sa pag worship kay Lord and prayer? Gusto nyo po ba? Para ang hina. Gusto nyo po ba? Yan, yung mga nag -yes, kayo po ay uh, sana makita namin sa uplift at sa ating upper room. So yung uplift po natin ay gaganapin na yan sa Friday, October 14, and yung upper room natin ay sa October 28. Lahat po yan ay magsisimula ng 7pm. So after work nyo po or after school ay pumunta kayo dito sa ating church para makasama po namin kayo. Ayan. So, that's our announcement for this morning. Now, let's worship God through the giving of His tithes and our offering. Let's prepare our hearts before we give to the Lord. Let's come to the Lord in prayer. We are thankful, O Lord, for this wonderful opportunity to worship you not only through the songs that we can sing, but through giving. Lord, we acknowledge that you are the source of everything that we have. And it is just right for us to give back what is really yours. Lord, as we give, may you find us faithful and may you find us trusting you that you are our good Lord who will provide for all our needs. Lord, may you be magnified and glorified as we give. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. morning. Good to see you again. <clears throat> Why don't we just bow our head and uh, we'll pray, commit this time to the Lord. <clears throat> Lord, we open our hearts to you. Speak to us. Use me as your mouthpiece to proclaim your word. And through your power, bring convictions in our hearts as we listen to you. Thank you for bringing us here. And speak to us, Lord. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> We're still in the series of obedience. And we've been talking about this uh, for several months already. I think several months already 
obedience. Okay. Uh, sana hindi ba kayo nagsawa no, na tuwing Sunday ay obedience lang palagi yung ating pinag-uusapan dito. No? Of course, uh, napaka-importante na mensahe yung obedience, ano, napaka-basic sa isang Christian life. In fact, ang dahilan kung bakit we share the word, we proclaim the word of God, ay hindi lang to inform people, but to transform people. At hindi mangyari yung transformation kapag ka walang obedience. Okay. Maaring puno yung isip natin, yung mind natin about the Word of God. Or maybe you have memorized a lot of passages in the Bible. Pero kapag ka walang obedience, it's just a theory. No, walang practice. So mahalaga yung pinag-uusapan yung tungkol sa obedience, okay? And where are you now as far as obedience concern? Okay. May nagbago ba sa buhay natin? May mga involvement ba tayo sa simbahan as an act of obedience to the Lord's command for us? And then we are also still in the series of talking about Bible characters, right? Okay, and uh, the name that's assigned to me is Barnabas. <coughs> I like Barnabas. Okay. In fact, and daming mga qualities si Barnabas na ako personally I uh, try my best to copy yung mga qualities ni Barnabas. <clears throat> so, uh, this morning's message is about the kind of person that God uses. Okay. I'll mention about obedience, but there are other important qualities ng isang Kristiyano para lalong magamit ng Panginoon at ito ay makikita natin sa buhay ni Barnabas. By looking closely at the life of Barnabas, we can identify several important qualities. Important qualities, okay? That God looks for in individuals so that the Lord can effectively and mightily use them. I'm sure deep inside our hearts, we want to be used by the Lord. I'm sure mayroong desire in your hearts na sana gagamitin ako ng Panginoon. Sana maging instrument ako ng Panginoon para uh, maabot ko ang mga hindi pa nakakakilala sa Panginoon. Sana magiging instrument ako o blessing for others. Sana makita nung iba no? ang Kristo sa buhay ko. Maaring hindi ko masabi directly, pero with the kind of life that I am living and with the quality of life that I am living, I would be able to display to them who Jesus Christ and His character. <clears throat> so the aim of my message this morning is to encourage and motivate you to be the kind of person that God can use. Okay. I want you to say that, no, maybe silently. Lord, use me. Lord, use me. Because if you will allow yourself to be used by the Lord, the Lord will surely use you. As Christians, we do not have the ability to accomplish anything in our strength. 
Alam natin ito, no? It is only when we put ourselves in the God that we can become fruitful and productive. Sa Bible, we see examples of ordinary people God uses in extraordinary ways. And one such individual was a man named Joseph. Of course, this is his given name. Not Joseph the dreamer, not Joseph of Arimathea, not Joseph the husband of Mary. Okay. Joseph was a Levite. Okay. Big sabihin, from the tribe of priests, si Joseph, from Cyprus, an island in the Mediterranean Sea. But eventually, his friends gave him the name Barnabas. Barnabas. At ang ibig sabihin ng Barnabas is son of encouragement. Okay. Napansin ng mga apostles, ng mga kaibigan niya na ang galing niyang mag-encourage. Ang daming nabibless sa buhay niya dahil sa mga ginagawa niya, sa mga words na ginagamit niya, nakaka- uplift, nakaka-encourage, nabubuhayan ng loob yung mga nadidiscourage. Okay. Ganon ba tayo? Sana ganon tayo. No? Ako yun yung aking desire. No? Maaring ako yung tao na hindi maraming words. No? Pero sana yung presence ko could be an encouragement to people. Yun yung aking desire. Kaya ko sinabi kanina na isa sa mga tao sa Bible na naka-influence sa buhay ko, itong si Barnabas. No? Itong si Barnabas. <clears throat> so son of encouragement because he had a reputation of being an encourager. Siguro pag sa panahon nila, pag may nagtatanong na, saan ba si Barnabas? Ah, yung, yung encourager. No, Di ba? Ganun tayo minsan mag-describe no? ng isang tao. Ah, yung, yung magaling magsalita. Ah, yung guwapo. Ah, yung pogi. No? But in the case of Barnabas, kilalang kilala siya because of, you know, His life is an encouragement to many people. So Barnabas was used by God to make a major impact in his generation for Christ. He possessed exceptional spiritual qualities and an unshakable confidence in God. And by looking closely at his life, we can identify these qualities that God looks for in individuals so that he can use them mightily. Number one, ano itong mga qualities na meron si Barnabas? Number one, Barnabas is very compassionate, full of compassion. Okay. And nag-uusapan natin yung obedience, ano? but we don't want you to obey out of compulsion. We want you to obey out of compassion. Okay. After all, in the Bible, ang compelling dimension sa obedience is love. Obey because you love, not because you are forced. Not because sinabi ni pastor. Not because napuno na kayo dahil sa every Sunday na lang, obedience yung pinag-uusapan. Okay. It should be the compelling dimension. So, si Barnabas is very compassionate, helping the needy. In Acts 4, 36 to 37, sabi dyan, Joseph, a Levite from Cyprus, whom the apostles called Barnabas, 
sold a field he owned and brought the money and put it all at the apostles' feet. The church at Jerusalem was growing rapidly and believers were being added to the church daily. Ganon ka tindi yung growth during the time, ano? During the first century uh, period, especially during the early stage of Christianity. And to think na during the time, napakatindi ng persecution. Napakatindi ng persecution sa kanila. And yet, ang sabi sa Bible, you know, growing rapidly and believers were being added to the church daily. And because of that, yung need became greater too. No, mayroong need. Need to, to support not only the workers, not only the apostles, not only the pastors, but yung mga tao na may need. And of course, Lahat tayo may need. Maaring ang iba sa atin, yung need ay spiritual. Yung iba sa atin ay need ay physical, material. Emotional. So during the time, napakalaki ng need. And in verse 7, sabi dito, he sold his field and gave it to the apostles. Nakita niya yung need. No? Nasa heart niya yung gustong tumulong. Nagkaroon siya ng compassion. He must have asked himself how much I'll give. And you know what? He decided to give not just 10% or 50%, but in the original language, it indicates that he gave it all. Siguro yung proceeds nung binenta niyang lupa, no? halimbawa, umabot ng 1 million. No? Kasi sa original language, yung sabi doon, he gave it all. Binigay niya yung buo. Okay? Hindi niya lang yung 10%. No? No? Hindi lang siya nagtabi para sa kanya, no? Kung hindi binigay niya ng buo. And to 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 know that, you know, you, you can already imagine the kind of heart meron si Barnabas. What kind of heart meron siya? Full of compassion. Out of his compassion, he gave generously. Generous. No? And I'm sure you know some people na very generous. And I'm sure iba sa inyo, sana ako din ganyan din. Gusto ko rin na ganyan, generous ako. Okay. That we will come to a point in our lives that we will not always be the recipient of people's generosity. But we ourselves would become generous. Yun yung gusto ng Panginoon. And yun yung gagamitin ng Panginoon. He did not just pray for them and say, God bless you. He was moved to help. So from conviction to action. From seeing the need to doing something to meet that need. I remember Jesus in Matthew chapter 9. And it says there, parang hindi ko yata mabasa. No? <laughs> Ako gumawa nito kayo maliit pala eh. <clears throat> Jesus went through all the towns and villages teaching in their synagogues proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and healing every disease and sickness. 
when he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. He had compassion on them. And ang sabi dito sa verse, moved with compassion. Ang moved with compassion indicates that he was moved in his innermost being. Sa loob. No? Ramdam niya, galing sa loob. Hindi lang dahil sa nakita niya, no? or hindi lang sa mata niya, or sa bibig niya. Pero galing sa loob. No? Ito ibig sabihin ng moved with compassion in his innermost beings. Springs from the deepest part of one's being. Yun ang ibig sabihin ng compassion dito. Na sa panahon natin, ang ginagamit natin na word is heartfelt compassion. Galing sa puso, hindi lang sa bibig. So heartfelt compassion, not indifferent or apathetic to people's struggle. Minsan, we brush them off. We ignore them. No? We ignore them. Not blaming or condemning or judging people for their mess. Minsan, ang attitude natin ay you know, manigas siya or Bala siya sa buhay niya, tamad siya eh. Okay. Hindi siya nagsisimba eh. Hindi siguro siya nagpe-pray. No. But it's not a sign of being compassionate when we have that attitude. But for Jesus, this is a compassion that leads to curing to caring, to feeding, and forgiving, and restoring people. Okay. He acted upon that feeling, that compassion that he had. In other words, compassion in its truest meaning prompts action. leads to action. Meron kang gagawin. And this is the kind of compassion that Barnabas had. He expressed it through his kindness and generosity. Generosity. Are you compassionate enough to help those in need? Second, courageous. Si Barnabas is a courageous person standing for truth. In Acts chapter 9, 26 to 28, sabi dito, when he came to Jerusalem, referring to Paul, no? hindi si Barnabas ito, no? referring to Paul, when he came to Jerusalem, he tried to join the disciples, but they were all afraid of him, not believing that he really was a disciple. Takot yung mga tao kay Paul during the time, especially during the, you know, yung bagong convert lang si Paul, ano? But, okay, Barnabas took him and brought him to the apostles. He told them how Saul on his journey had seen the Lord and that the Lord had spoken to him and how in Damascus he had preached fearlessly in the name of Jesus. So Saul stayed with them and moved about freely in Jerusalem, speaking boldly in the name of the Lord. After Saul, who later became Paul, Okay, alam ninyo ito, no? na after the conversion of Saul, binago yung kanyang pangalan to Paul. Okay? After he was converted to Christianity, he showed up in Jerusalem. Siguro excited siya to join the believers fellowship and maybe to help them. Okay? Umuusok siya no? sa passion to 
to join the believers. But you know, the Christians there were not willing to accept him because they knew what he had done to the church before. Before the conversion kasi ni Paul, persecutor siya. Siya yung nagpe-persecute. Siya yung isa sa mga leaders na mga persecutors of Christians during the time. And in fact, they were threatened no? by Paul. No? Papatayin sila kapag ka nagpatuloy sila sa kanilang pananampalataya. And so they were afraid of him. They were filled with skepticism. Ayaw nilang tanggapin si Paul. However, again, dito na naman, ano? Kanina, but, ngayon, however, the big-hearted Barnabas, nandiyan na naman si Barnabas, okay, took Paul and brought him to the apostles. He testified on behalf of Paul and explained to them that his conversion is real. So he, he, you know, he became the lawyer of Paul. No? Nag-testify siya about Paul. Kasi hindi siya tatanggapin eh, sa Jerusalem. Takot sila sa kanya. So he testified on behalf of Paul and explained to them that his conversion is real. He stood up for Paul and begged his fellow Christians to give Paul a chance. So crucial moment ito. Turning point din ito sa life ni Paul. Kung hindi siya tinanggap, kung wala si Barnabas during the time, we don't know exactly kung ano nangyari. No? Baka bumalik si Paul sa pagiging persecutor. Okay? Baka nagbackslide siya kasi may expectation siya na yung mga Christians very loving Pero yung hindi siya tinanggap, baka nasaktan siya. Okay. So he stood for Paul and begged his fellow Christians to give Paul a chance. So in here we observe that Barnabas took the risk in defending and associating with Paul. And what impresses me here is Barnabas' courage to stand for truth. Stand for truth. Even though it went against the opinion and feelings of the majority, he stood up for what is right and true. For what is right and what is true. Courageous person. Alam nyo, ang evangelism and the sharing of the gospel is a courageous act of standing for truth. Kasi hindi madali mag-share ng gospel, right? Some of us are afraid. Some of us, my hesitation, we are reluctant to share the gospel. Ano kaya magiging response niya? Tatanggapin kaya niya? Baka pagalitan ako, baka i-persecute ako. So to be able to share the gospel takes a lot of courage. And nakita natin ito kay Barnabas. Courageous. Are you courageous enough to stand for truth? Third, he is not only courageous, but he is also an encourager. Okay. He is also an encourager. Caring for others. Acts 11, 20 to 24. Sorry. It says, Some of them, however, men from Cyprus and Cyrene, went to Antioch and began to speak the Greeks also, telling them the good news about the Lord Jesus. The Lord's hand was with them, and a great number of people believed and turned to the Lord. 
news of this reached the church in Jerusalem, and they sent Barnabas to Antioch. When he arrived and saw what the grace of God had done, he was glad and encouraged them all to remain true to the Lord with all their hearts. He encouraged them. He was a good man, referring to Barnabas, full of the Holy Spirit and faith, and a great number of people were brought to the Lord. Because of his encouragement, all the more, siguro mas na-inspire yung mga Christians to live their lives for Jesus, to keep on sharing the gospel. And according to the passage, mas lalong dumami yung nanampalataya sa Panginoon. So Christians who were scattered because of persecution preached the gospel to the Jews living in Antioch. And in verse 21, the hand of the Lord was with them and a great number of people were added to the church. Because of that, pinadala si Barnabas sa Antioch para i-encourage yung mga Christians. The word encourage here means to come alongside. To come alongside someone to teach, to cheer up. Okay. Naging controversial yung phrase na move on, ano? Nabasa nyo yun, ano? Move on. Okay. Of course, depende yun kung kailan mo sasabihin, ano? Siguro kung yun yung una mong sasabihin, parang hindi tama. No? Pero after saying a lot of things and then you conclude by move, moving on, maybe yun yung tama doon. Okay. So, to come alongside someone to teach, to cheer up, to comfort, to strengthen, to give courage, yun ang ibig sabihin ng encouragement. Pinapalakas mo yung loob ng isa. No? Sa panahon natin ngayon, ang daming mga bagay that would discourage us. Mention ni Masil kanina, tas ng presyo ng gasolina, ng diesel. Ano? Crime is, you know, parang nangyayari uli, ano? dumadami uli. Okay. Parang walang nagbago after the election. Parang medyo lumala pa nga, sabi nung iba. No? Of course, hindi natin sinisisi yung gobyerno. No? But what can we do in a situation like this? How can we help those who are discouraged? We come alongside to teach, to cheer up, to comfort, to strengthen, to give courage, to inspire, to give hope. To give hope. When Barnabas encouraged the people at Antioch, he was saying, remain true to the Lord with all your hearts. Sabi niya. In fact, the Living Bible's paraphrase says, Barnabas encouraged the believers to stay close to the Lord whatever the cost. Okay. Whatever the cost. Ano man yung pinagdadaanan, ano man ang journey ninyo na mahirap. No? Stay. No? Stay close to the Lord. So his encouragement inspired and made Christians even more courageous to share the gospel, to live their lives, resulting to more people being added to the church. Wow. Are you an encourager amidst a world that is full of discouraging situations? Ang hindi mo alam, yung katabi mo may pinagdadaanan yun. Maaring a simple tap on the shoulder of the other person can mean a lot of things. Maybe a question like, how are you now? Can be already an encouragement to some people. Uh, 
Number four, obedience. Okay? Doing what God says. In Acts chapter 13, 1 to 3, sabi dito, Now in the church at Antioch, there were prophets and teachers. Barnabas, Simeon called Nigger, Lucius of Cyrene, Manayan, who had been brought up with the hero of Tetrarch and Saul. While they were worshiping the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, Set apart for me, Barnabas, and Saul, for the work to which I have called them. So after they had fasted and prayed, they placed their hands on them and sent them off. The Holy Spirit spoke to them. Barnabas could have rationalized and easily argued that he and Paul were having an effective ministry in the city of Antioch. And therefore should not be sent elsewhere. You know, the Lord's using us here. We're effective here. You know? But Barnabas was simply obedient. His heart's inclined to do whatever what God wants him to do. He's obedient and willing to follow the Holy Spirit's leading even if it would take them to some unknown locations for an unknown period. Okay. Magulo na nga yung Antioch, magulo na nga yung Jerusalem, and then papadala pa sila sa ibang lugar. Sigurado yung persecution, sigurado yung difficulties that they would encounter. But again, Barnabas is simply obedient and willing. Our greatest example of obedience is Jesus, actually. Okay. In fact, in the Bible, in Philippians chapter 2, it says there, Jesus became obedient to death, even death on the cross. Because that's the Father's will. I remember a missionary who has this motto, sabi niya, Wherever you lead me, I will follow. Whatever you feed me, I will swallow. What a, an obedient heart. Are you obedient enough to do whatever God says? Number five, forgiver. Keeping no record of wrongs. Okay. He's an example of a person na you know, very forgiving, considerate of others, tender-hearted, kind. In Acts 15, 36 to 41, sometime later, Paul said to Barnabas, let us go back and visit the believers in all the towns where we preach the word of the Lord and see how they are doing. Barnabas wanted to take John also called Mark with them, but Paul did not think it wise to take him because he had deserted them in Pamphylia and had not continued with them in the work. They had such a sharp disagreement that they parted company. Barnabas took Mark and sailed to Cyprus, but Paul chose Silas and left, commended by the believers to the grace of the Lord. He went through Syria and Cilicia, strengthening the churches. So Paul here suggested to Barnabas that they should visit the churches that they had established before. He was concerned about their welfare and their progress. Barnabas approved the idea, but he wanted to take Mark along with them. Gusto ni Barnabas dalhin si Mark. Ayaw ni Paul. Kasi in their previous trip, dinala nila si Mark Hindi tumagal si Mark, inabandon sila. So nadala si Paul. Sabi niya, ayaw ko, dadalhin mo si Mark. Eh si Barnabas gusto niyang dalhin si Mark. Okay. So Paul thought it was not a good idea since Mark had gone along with them 
on the first missionary journey but then gave up and quit. Iniwan sila no, sa ere. Paul was inclined to be firm while Barnabas preferred to be tender. Barnabas thought that Mark had learned his lesson and should be given a chance. He looks at Mark through the eyes of grace. So Barnabas thought that Mark had learned his lesson and should be given a chance. One of two could have given in. But Barnabas would not give up support for Mark. And Paul would not give up his conviction about Mark's lack of dedication. And so the two went their separate ways. To resolve the issue, nagkanya-kanya sila ng direction. Of course, eventually, nakita din naman na naging blessing yun kasi naging dalawang team ang nag-evangelize. Okay. So Barnabas chose to be kind to Mark, a young man who did not have many friends. Barnabas must have said to himself, John Mark, needs me. If I don't help him now, who else will help him? Who else? Barnabas deserves the highest commendation for his merciful and forgiving spirit. Had it not been for the kindness of Barnabas, Paul might never have been accepted in Jerusalem church and Mark may have decided to give up serving the Lord because no one else will trust him. But nandiyan si Barnabas. Ang galing, di ba? Are you merciful, tender-hearted enough to forgive those who offends you? Are you a person who keeps no record of wrongs? Actually, it's love in the Bible in 1 Corinthians 13. Sabi ni Paul, love keeps no record of wrongs. Hindi nagtatanim ng galit, hindi nagtatanim ng sama ng loob. No, ano man ang ginawa sa kanya na mali, kinakalimutan niya. Hindi balat si Buyas. Okay. Six, the last one. Medyo mahaba, no? Sorry. Bibihira lang ako mag-preach, eh, kaya sasagaring ko na. <laughs> of course, I have a schedule on next month. No? And on December. Thank you, uh, pastors, for giving me the opportunity to preach here again. The last one is humility. Wow, ang laki nito, no? humility. Sabi ni Peanut, it's hard to be humble when you're as great as I am. Humility. At the beginning of their missionary journey, Barnabas was leading the team. Siya yun, no? He was the older Christian and had discipled Paul after his conversion. Okay? So si Barnabas ang discipler dito. Si Paul yung disciple. Okay? Kaya lang kung titingnan natin sa Bible, parang sikat yata si Paul. No? Kukunti lang yung mga verses in the Bible that talks about Barnabas. Hindi ibig sabihin na dahil hindi siya masyadong na-mention ay hindi significant yung buhay niya. Okay. So Barnabas was leading the team. He was the older Christian and had discipled Paul after his conversion. However, the leadership shifted from Barnabas to Paul. This change of leadership was because Paul was more gifted a public speaker, apologist, and an evangelist. 
while Barnabas had other gifts, including serving, encouraging, giving, and showing mercy. Nasa likod lang siya. No? Initially, sa listahan ni Luke, who is the writer of the book of Acts, ang palaging na may mention ay si Barnabas and then Paul. But eventually, in order changes from Paul naging from from Barnabas to Paul naging Paul to Barnabas. Kung titingnan ninyo, no, as as it develops yung pagkasulat ng Book of Acts. Sa umpisa, it's always Barnabas and then Paul. But eventually, it's already Paul and Barnabas. If Barnabas had been a proud person, he might have quit the team and gone home. Kasi nawalan na siya ng pangalan. Okay. Natitreaten na siya. Ayaw ko na. No? Bakit natatanggalan ako dito ng posisyon? No? Bakit mayroong isang sumisikat? Eh ako naman ang gumagawa ng mas malaki dito. However, he was willing to serve behind the scenes with Paul as the leader. Barnabas was willing to serve in the shadows. If you are a proud person and working in a group like this, you will not thrive. Lalo na kapag kagusto mong sumikat. In Philippians chapter 2, verse 6 to 8, we have here the greatest example, and I'm referring to Jesus Christ. Ang sabi dito sa passage, Jesus who being very, in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself. He humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on the cross. And the next verse there says, and because of it, God exalted him and gave him a name that is above every name. He humbled himself. Brothers and sisters, the way up is down. The way up is down. And don't depend on people to lift you up. Wait for God to do it for you. All you have to do is to humble yourself. Are you humble enough to serve in the shadows? So here's the application. The Bible teaches that God has a specific purpose for your life and mine. He has uniquely equipped each of us with the abilities and spiritual gifts to accomplish that purpose. Let's learn from Barnabas. Are you the kind of people God can use? Are you like Barnabas, compassionate? Courageous, encourager, obedient, forgiving, and humble. Are you an instrument available for God's purposes? Are you willing to let Him use you whenever, wherever, and however He chooses? I pray that you are. Let's bow our head for prayer. Let these words, Lord, settle in our hearts. And by your power, use your word to transform us, to mold us, to 
cause us to grow mature, to strengthen us, to direct our ways, to inspire us, to encourage us. Let your words dwell in our hearts richly. Allow that after this, we will, be, we will never be the same again. We honor you. Thank you for speaking to us. In Jesus' name, amen. Nihilig po namin ang lahat na magsitayo.
心内已往定去，卡拉皮人阿维提。Sa ating、uh, pagtatapos tayo ay lumapit sa ating mga pangyarihan Dios. Ali dumulog sa kanya. Yumuko tayo at manalangin. Aming Diyos na makapangyarihan sa lahat. Salamat sa aming patuloy na paglapit sa iyo, Panginoong Diyos. Patuloy mo kaming yakapin na mahigpit ng iyong pagmamahal. Salamat po sa napakagandang worship experience ngayong umaga together with our brothers and sisters in Christ. They are an encouragement to us. Bawat isa na narito ngayong umagang ito. Lord, teach us more to become like Barnabas, like what Dr. Junas shared to us, Panginoon. Turuan mo kami maging katulad niya at katulad mo. We will have the compassion, Lord, courage, obedience, the forgiveness, Lord, as a Christian. Patuloy kong dinadalangin ang mga first time dito sa Impact Church. Lord, bless them. Lord, fill them with the hunger to know you more bilang kanilang Diyos at tagapagligtas. Dalangin ko, Panginoon, yung mga pumunta ngayong umagang ito na naghahanap ng kagalingan na nanggagaling sa iyo. You are our healer, O God, of our physical bodies. We pray for healing upon them, Panginoon sa kanila mga katawan, sa mga nararamdaman nila, sa mga may sakit at karamdaman ngayon, Panginoon. Ikaw ang humipos sa kanilang lupang katawan. Bigyan mo sila ng lakas. And more than that, Lord, the, uh, the mental uh, capacity, Lord God, to know that these things are temporary lang lahat, Panginoon. Pagkat eventually, Lord, You are our good God. At patuloy mong ipapakita sa amin ang kabutihan mo. Panginoon, dalangin namin yung mga may pinagdadaanan din ngayon. They, maybe they have felt the uh, pain, the stress, the being tired, Lord. May you be our rest for today. May you be our peace, our joy sa buhay namin. And we will never forget, Lord, as we face another week. You are there for us and with us. Lord, you are good and we praise you for who you are. And in all of this, tinataas namin ang iyong pangalan at ikaw lamang sa simbahang ito. Patuloy mo kaming gamitin, Panginoong Diyos. Patuloy mong pag-apawin ang pagmamahal mo ang simbahang ito upang patuloy kang maitaas ngayon at magpakailanman. Palakpakan natin ang Panginoon. Good morning, church. Have a blessed week.